So she is actually the first genetic counselor who um, graduated and completed her internship in Cape Town. Um, she's been in private practice and HBCSA registered for like 16 years already. And she currently also works at Pathgate. Um, she's been working there for the past six years. Um, so yes, so she is, you know, she knows quite a lot, <laughs> if I can put it up. There you go. Thank you, Chantal, for that introduction, making me feel a bit old. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. It's always such a pleasure to speak um, at Cape Town Breast Cancer Forum. And thank you, Etienne, from my side, for keeping it alive through COVID. I think um, we all always learn so much, and it's always such a, a multidisciplinary approach, which I think is um, ideal for our patients. Right, so I've been asked task to um, talk about a positive result in the context of CHECK2 or PALB2, so a little bit of the other genes, because I know we all by now feel comfortable with BRCA1 and BRCA2, but time to start getting comfortable with these other genes as well. Um, so I'm going to jump right in with my case report just because of time. So Mrs. P came to see me at the age of 61 at the time, um, referred by her oncologist in 2017. Um, she had previously been managed in um, France and had had a hysterectomy in a BSO at the age of 47 because of gynecological reasons and had been diagnosed with colon cancer at the age of 53. Um, and had been diagnosed recently with a, a breast cancer um, at the age of 60, and her oncologist, looking at the family history, referred her because her sister had been diagnosed with a breast cancer at the age of 48. Um, her mother had been diagnosed with breast cancer at advanced age, 95, a maternal aunt with breast cancer at a young age, 49, and a maternal grandmother with ovarian cancer. So. Um, there was no paternal family history of note, and she had Mauritian ancestry. And I mean, it's interesting for us in our context, we've seen a lot of check two um, variants in my, with my path care hat on, um, but in my private practice, I've definitely not seen a lot of check two um, results. Had to go scratching for this one. Um, so you can see a report showing that uh, well known pathogenic. The 1100 DAL C variant in check 2 um, and uh, in the heterozygous form pathogenic. So that was the actionable result that we could follow up with and discuss. And a VUS in check 2 um, that I did not feel was um, uh, very concerning. So if you look at the um, variant details, just to note that the absolute majority of data that we have on this gene um, are for patients that have shown this truncating 1100DLC variant. So just a note of caution that if you do have a pathogenic variant in, in CHECK2 that is not this variant, to think um, um, to involve genetic colleagues just to talk through what do we actually know about other variants. There's been some literature on the um, I157T um, variant and some showing that there's actually lower risk implications, but also some interesting studies showing that there may, may be increased risk for, for prostate cancer in males. So there is definitely a lack of data um, regarding other variants, um, and especially missing variants, so where one amino acid is changed to another as opposed to a, a premature stop codon. So just really to, um, to be extra careful about um, the specific variant when it comes to these other genes. So I'm going to spend a little, little bit of time on this slide just because I think the NCCN guidelines, um, the way they summarize it's really helpful. These are the very new September 2022 um, guidelines that they call the 2023 guidelines. So hot off the press that Chantal also referred to. Um, so as you can see, um, 
the, these have been reviewed. There's some specific indications of updates for um, CHECK2 and BPALB2 that I'll be discussing. So absolute lifetime risk of breast cancer um, reviewed and um, to be between 20 and 40% lifetime risk for breast cancer and management recommendations being annual mammogram to start at age 40 um, and to consider breast MRI in contrast um, uh, starting from age 30 to 35. And again, as Chantal and Maxine has said, here again, just the message that family history really matters. It's not about the lab report in itself. One has to take into account what your concern is based on the lab report, but you also have to take into account what your concern is based on the family history, and that should inform our management strategy. Um, so uh, there, there's insufficient evidence to consider risk-reducing mastectomy for CHECK2 results by themselves. But again, within your multidisciplinary team to discuss the family history as a separate um, concern and to see whether there are exceptions. But based on the CHECK2 reports on itself, we should not be offering um, surgical risk reducing um, options because of this genome by itself. Um, so not no established association with ovarian cancer, according to NCCN. Um, and uh, I'm going to go into colon cancer um, risks in a moment. But again, just the, as you can see at the bottom there, uh, the, um, risk data are based only on um, the uh, likely pathogenic to pathogenic variants and just to, again, be um, careful about specific variants. So for um, colon cancer risk, an estimated lifetime risk of about 5 to 10%. And to start um, colonoscopy screening from age 40 or 10 years, for every, four, every five years, um, or 10 years younger than the uh, youngest diagnosis, if there is such in, uh, in the family. So we would have wanted to know for Mrs. P, who had already been diagnosed with a breast cancer, what is her contralateral breast cancer risk in terms of how we counsel her, how we inform her team of, of risk implications. So just to show that models are models, and I think we have to re remind ourselves this, that it's just the best we have, but it's definitely not perfect. Um, you can see that CAN risk, which is based on the Bidicea model, which takes family history into account on the left, and the ask to me model that does not take family history into account, it just gives you the data. But what is quite nice about the ask to me um, data is as it plots it, it also shows you by, uh, by stars how um, good that data is and gives you a bit of a summary. But just to show that um, it it's, you know, it does not give us the same answer and we have to decide what we tell the patient and as a team what we offer. So um, just to give you the same data in a table format, some people like graphs, some people like, like numbers, but you can see quite a, diff quite a big difference. Um, can risk risking her at 14% um, up to age um, 80, so then comparable 37-36% um, risk on ostomy. Uh, just to also take into account that they age up to different ages, risk up to different ages. Okay, so what does this mean for other family members, other unaffected family members who can be tested? What would the risk implications be? Um, I also like the OSME kind of that summary slide just to show us kind of a bird's eye view to, to summarize. So um, this now would be an unaffected family member's lifetime risk of breast cancer. And um, you can see why risk-reducing uh, surgery would not be offered in this context. If we look at male and female relatives, the colorectal cancer risk is not significantly higher, but we know colon cancer is truly manageable and truly um, preventative if we detect um, polyps at an early stage, so there we do kind of jump in and do what we can, um, but in practice not that different, starting a little bit earlier every five years. So um, just again to show that in the table format to compare lifetime risk of colon cancer, um, this was in a male 
um, risks in a male, which is slightly higher than females. So um, there's this one, so again, um, ask to me will show you where the evidence is from. So this was a Copenhagen study um, where they looked at the association of renal cancer in patients with CHECK2 variants. So um, it's again, only in this 1100DAL-C uh, variant, and so something to maybe consider, but to take into account the um, lack of other studies associated with that risk. There again, just some talk table format. Um, so when we look at male relatives, as you can see, prostate cancer risk significantly increased. So um, increased risk, you can see that risk starts to increase towards the late 50s and a lifetime risk of over 45% um, at age 85 compared to 13. So definitely important to um, screen males for this variance and suggest appropriate management. Right, over to the um, other gene that I was asked to speak about, so PALB2. Again, I'm just going to jump into the case study. Um, Mrs. W came to see me at the age of 40 um, at the time when I saw her and referred by her surgeon, and she had been diagnosed at the age of 40. She had a mother who had been diagnosed with a liver cancer at the age of 56, and uh, we seen that that was a primary cancer, there was not a lot of further information we could get, and she'd had a BSO and hysterectomy in her 30s, so we could question whether that could have been protective for her in terms of the lack of um, breast and ovarian cancer history with her. A maternal uncle with prostate cancer at the age of 68, and a grandmother with uterine cancer in her 70s. So based on that family history, we did an NBTAC panel, and a whole exon deletion was detected. So the whole of exon um, 11 was deleted. And obviously with the large deletions that I always say to patients is taking out a whole chapter of the book, we would have a, a strong suspicion that that would have an impact on the protein. Um, so this was classified as pathogenic. Um, again, um, the variant details. So this would be seen as a loss of function variant. So again, the recent guidelines for PALB2, absolute lifetime risk for breast cancer between 41 and 60%. Again, like Chantal said, these are still, in a way, the new kids on the block. We don't have long-term in-depth studies as we do for BRC1 and BRC2. So it is a moving target and we have to move with that target. Um, so now most recent guidelines suggest annual mammogram and breast MRI um, from age 30. And here you can see they do say to discuss risk reducing mastectomy and again to take family history into account. Um, male breast cancer risk 0.9%. Um, so we know male breast cancers very rare, so that is higher. Um, and then we know that there's an, an associated risk of ovarian cancer of between 3 and 5%. Um, and again, in the context of the family history, to consider surgical options for ovarian cancer management over the age of 45. So one could argue that that risk is not very high, but again, in the context of poor um, efficacy of our surveillance for ovarian cancer to, to consider and definitely to take into consideration the family history. Pancreatic cancer risk between 5 and 10 percent. And again, we know that there's a lot of debate around pancreatic surveillance. We now do have it available in our setting, um, but again, to consider family history, um, whether we should implement surveillance for, for these patients. So again, the first question is risk for the other breast. So can risk risks, um, the contralateral breast cancer risk for this patient high, over 60% risk for her? Um, asked to me does not give, the, it states that there's insufficient data for them to suggest 
the risk. And this was a, a study that I found at the time and included in my letter, just to say that this study looked at specifically PALB2 with a contralateral breast cancer risk of around 10% within the next five years. So again, we do what we can to inform the patient and the team, but um, these other genes, sometimes we do feel a little bit frustrated with when we've been spoiled with BRCA1 and BRCA2 and what we can put together. So again, just a table format of the CAN risk, um, breast cancer risk. So for unaffected other family members, so this is now in a female relative, the breast cancer risk, um, just to show that we can see in the late 30s, it starts to climb um, and pancreatic cancer risk, as you can see in the in the 70s starts to pick up a little bit. So important considerations for family members to manage their risk. And that's then all from me for tonight. And over to Robin to discuss testing options. Thanks. Thanks.